So here we go again with another famous aerospace engineer. This time it's going to be Sir Frank Whittle. <clears throat> Just like last time, he's done a lot of stuff in his life, so I'm going to try to go through this pretty quickly. He's largely known as the father of the jet engine. We'll get to that in a second. But he lived from 1906 to 1997. He's done a lot in his life. Very big in aerospace engineering. It's crazy the amount of stuff he did. It's disputed that he was actually the inventor of the jet engine. Also more on that later. But along with that, he was an accomplished pilot and an RAF officer. So just kind of a little general overview of him. Just a picture of him on the right. There's the portrait on the left when they inducted him into the Aviation Hall of Fame just three years ago, four years ago. And at a young age, he showed an interest in aviation. He tried to join the uh, Royal Air Force as young as 15 years old. They wouldn't let him join. But he got an uh, apprenticeship. And after three years of doing that apprenticeship, he actually got to join the RAF and went to uh, the RAF College in Cranwell. And two years in, he wrote his thesis, Future Development and Aircraft Design. This is kind of the beginning of the big change from uh, reciprocating piston engines into the jet age. And it would be quite a while before he eventually went into the production of this. So um, he actually describes in the thesis that an aircraft can travel faster at higher altitudes due to lower density, meaning less resistance. But a new engine would be needed. So he applied for a patent for his new turbojet engine idea in 1930. So he was the first to actually design the jet engine, but it's widely debated who should get credit. This guy here in the middle of the screen is Hans von Ohain. And people believe that he actually deserves credit because he was the first to invent an operational jet engine. He did not file his patent before uh, Sir Frank Little did, but he was the first to actually have one operation. They were even tested in the same year. Like the engines were tested in the same year, but Whittle designed his before O'Hain designed his. So this is widely debated still. Um, and in 1936, there on the right is the picture of the first engine. It was tested on 12 April, 1937. Whittle was permitted by the RAF to go into business with two other RAF pilots in 1936. And five years later, this engine on the right was finally able to be developed into this airplane, the Boston Meteor. 1941, the first flight lasted 17 minutes. So this was the uh, the first jet engine powered aircraft with Wills engine. So the first designed engine in the first aircraft. Previously, there in the bottom right corner is technically the first jet aircraft, but the first designed engine is in this Boston Meteor here. And of course, this began the jet age. Very huge advances, completely changed aviation forever, even up to today. And then there's some extra facts about uh, Sir Frank Little because he just did so much stuff in life. He was a test pilot from 1931 to 1932. Uh, and after his time at the RAF College, he pursued further education, engineering school, at the University of Cambridge. And the one thing that's really funny is that his jet engine concept was initially ridiculed by the air ministry like it was looked at as just a joke people didn't take it seriously and he retired from the RAF in 1948 with the rank of air commodore pretty high rank he was also knighted that year and due to uh negligence the british government actually awarded him a tax-free gift of thousand pounds because they neglected his patent and his business and in 1986 he was awarded the order of merit and actually, one of the more interesting facts, in my opinion, is that he moved to the USA in 1977 and was a research professor for the Naval Academy. Uh, so yeah, if you have anything that you want to know, uh, just type in the comments and I'll give you some extra sources. There's so much on Sir Frank Whittle that you really can't narrow it down in one video. Main things, he's the father of the jet engine. Um, it's debated whether he should get the credit for that or not, but he was the first to design and actually run one even though O'Hain ran one before he did. So yeah, a lot on Sir Frank Whittle. But this is the, the main rundown. Thanks for watching. Here's all my sources, all my references.